Normally, when we're asked to compare two triangles, we are talking about similar triangles, and that's kind of much easier. In this case, we are being asked about congruent triangles. The rules for these are much more complicated, so we're gonna have to be really careful here. Uh, the first thing I would do is let's just draw two triangles. I'm not gonna bother with scale, so let's just draw them, and we'll do A, B, C, and D, E, F, and they're telling us what matches up, right? So B and E are each 27, so that's 27 here, 27 here. And C and F are each 41, so uh, C is 41, F is 41. Uh, which additional piece of information is sufficient to determine whether triangle ABC is congruent to triangle uh, DEF? So um, the, the key piece with congruent triangles is it doesn't matter if we know that all the angles are the same. That means that the triangles are similar, but congruent is more specific. It means similar triangles are kind of the same overall shape, but different sizes, right? So it's kind of like you shrink or grow the triangle. Those would be similar even if they have different dimensions. The angles are the same, they, they kind of form the same proportions. For congruent triangles, no, they're all the same no matter what. So if we've got angles, we kind of need a side to fill things in. Um, another angle is not gonna do it. And, and that's why uh, something like choice A is wrong. Um, First of all, we know the measure of triangle of, of angle A. We know that there's always 180 degrees in a triangle, so I could use my calculator and just do some subtraction and subtract at the 27, subtract at the 41, and just get the angle A. Like, I don't need it to be told to me. I kind of already have it, and that's why more angles aren't gonna help us here. Um, now, the length of side AB is getting closer. That'd be really helpful, except I need to prove the two triangles congruent. So just knowing something about one of the triangles is not going to be good. I need to have something that's that's shared by both so that I can compare them. So that's not going to work either. Now if I got BC and EF, normally you'd see this kind of labeled like this. You'd have a little line showing that those are the same. And a lot of times we do congruent triangles in school, we don't even have the angle measures. We're, we're more told that like they're the same through these kind of arcs that we draw, right? And so if I fill all that in, now I see what I've got. I've got what's known as angle side angle, right? We have the side in between the two angles that are kind of on that side. And if we know that two triangles both kind of have the same angle and uh, the side or two angles and the side in between them, we know that they're congruent. This is one of the ways to prove that they are congruent. So C is gonna be my answer. Uh, generally speaking, I'm not gonna get into all the details here about congruent triangles. You can subscribe to my channel. I've made videos about this in the past. Um, but basically for any uh, congruent triangles, we need three, I would say, matching pairs of, of things, whether it's sides or angles. Um, and to start, we only had two, right? We had the angles B and E and the angles C and F, but that's only two things, two pairs. We would need a third thing, kind of no matter what, to, to do it. So there are some exceptions. There are some combinations of three that don't work, but um, for general, like you kind of need the, the three, and so something like D is, is really never gonna be the answer for this because it, it's only leaving us with two things. So that might be a helpful thing. We need three, and that's what choice C is giving us. It's giving us three pieces that match up between the triangles, and it's in this angle side angle combination, which is an acceptable way to do it. Uh, and there you go, that's the answer. <laughs>